Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are continuing our Whiteboard Wednesday video series on global load balancing. And today we're going to talk about uh, a, a, one of the dynamic load balancing modes uh, for the GTM, and that is quality of service. So I've already written a whole bunch of stuff on here uh, uh, so that you can kind of see what is included in quality of service. And we've talked about each of these different, uh, what I'll call performance factors, and for, for any given uh, dynamic or, or static um, load balancing mode, you can select any one of these to use to, uh, to choose what virtual server you're going you're gonna to select. But what quality of service does is it kind of combines all of these so that let's say you care about more than one of these, then certainly you could use quality service and it includes uh, as many of these as you want to include. And so, um, so it's kind of a combination of, of all of these things. And again, the things that it looks at, and I'll call these, uh, I'll, I'll, write, I'll write performance factor over here um, for the things that it, that it looks at. So performance factor. And so round trip time, and, I'm, and I won't go through what each one of these things means. We've already talked about those in other videos. Uh, but round trip time, hops, virtual server score, packet rate, topology, link capacity, virtual server capacity, kilobytes per second and completion rate. So you can see that this is a pretty powerful uh, load balancing mode because it's looking at all of those things together. So it's, uh, it's a pretty significant uh, thing to, to look at. One thing that I'll mention on round trip time and hops that the GTM has kind of a little nuance of that. If there is a value selected for round trip time and hops together, then it will set the, uh, the default um, to, it, it will set the hops to zero in round trip time, but it will actually use that value. So it's not going to use both of those at the same time. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention on each of these performance factors is uh, number one, keep in mind that a high uh, value on some, of the, on some of these things is a good thing, and a low value on others is a good thing. So, and then of course vice versa. So I kind of wanted to go through each one of them. Round trip time, you're going to, and I'll just put like a little down arrow here. Uh, hops, you'll want, so round trip time, a low value is better. Hops, a low value is better. Virtual server score, a high, a high value is, is better. Packet rate, you're going to want low value on packet rate. Topology, you're going to want a high value on topology. Link capacity, you're going to want a high value. Virtual server capacity, this is uh, how much capacity you have on your virtual server. You want more capacity, it's good. Kilobytes per second, you want low. That means you're not processing as many at that moment. And then completion rate, um, high value is better. So again, keep in mind the values for some of these uh, big numbers are good. Others, small numbers are good. Uh, the other thing that I'll mention really quick is the concept of scale. So I'll just write the word uh, scale over here. And that is that each of these is not necessarily uh, on the same scale in terms of you know zero to ten or zero to a hundred or whatever. And, and the quick example I'll use is say round trip time versus uh, hops. Round trip time is measured on a scale from zero to two million, and I'll just put mil, and it's measured in microseconds. So the scale for round trip time is zero to two million, whereas hops goes from zero to 64. So obviously 64 is significantly less than 2 million and so if you have, uh, it, so if you change the value let's say for hops and you go from 0 to 1 that is going to have a more significant impact than if you change the round trip the round trip time from 0 to 1. So again keep in mind the scale and the uh, and you know the big and small values in terms of what's good and what's bad. Okay, so now that we know all that stuff, we need to figure out, well, what, what does the GTM do with all of this in order to figure out which virtual server to select? And essentially what it does is it goes through this equation, and I'll just write kind of the concept of the equation over here, and basically what it does is it takes the performance factor, and I'll write this out, performance factor times, I'll call, I'll call it the coefficient, coefficient. And so performance factor times coefficient. And I always love to use the word coefficient. It just sounds like you know what you're talking about. You know, it's a pretty cool word. All right, so performance factor times coefficient 
and then it's going to add, and I'll try not to get in the way here, so then it's going to add the next performance factor and the next coefficient. It's just going to go through all that until it comes up with an overall value. And because what I talked about before with the scale, uh, the, way that it, the way that it handles that scale issue is that it normalizes each value whenever it does this math for each performance factor and coefficient. It, uh, it actually looks at the raw metrics. So like let's say for round trip time, if the value is let's say 50 microseconds, uh, then it takes that, it normalizes that to a value between 0 and 10, and it uses that in its, uh, you know, in its equation here so that it, you know, so it normalizes all these different values because they are on such different scales. So you take all that together, you take each of these factors, you take each of the uh, coefficients that are associated with each of these factors, you run it through this equation and you come up with an overall quality of service score for each virtual server in your GTM pool. And so, again, the overall question is, which virtual server are we going to select for any given client request? And the answer is, after all this crazy uh, calculation and all that, let's say this one right here has the better quality of service score, that one's the one that's going to get selected. Um, the nice thing about this is that you can go into the GTM and you can actually change the coefficient or you can change kind of the, the factor weight, if you will, uh, for each of these different performance factors. And so if you care significantly about, say, round trip time, well, you can give that a more significant coefficient or a more significant weight, um, and, then, uh, and then that will weigh more heavily in the overall equation. Even though it's still going to take into account other performance factors, it's going to make that one weigh more, as it were. And so that's, that's going to be a bigger uh, part of the equation. Uh, another, the, another thing I'll mention really quick is, let's say you don't care about one of these things. I mean, after all, this is a pretty complex, pretty large equation with a lot of different uh, factors here. Um, the way that you take any one of these out of the equation, because you're doing a multiplication problem here, is you just make the coefficient equal to zero for any of these. And so obviously zero times whatever is zero, and that's just going to take that specific factor out of the equation. Okay, so. Again, quality of service, really powerful thing to use in terms of dynamic load balancing. And, um, and if, you, uh, if, if you want to, get in there in the GTM, start to play around with the different levels or the different numbers with the coefficients and with the, uh, with the weights and you know, see how all this, and, and then test it out, see how it all looks you know, in terms of which virtual server gets selected. And so uh, this GTM, it's got some powerful stuff. Uh, we just might want to make sure you guys know all about all the different load balancing modes that are out there. Um, so I hope this makes sense. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll link to some of, the, um, uh, some of the documentation on exactly how, the, like how these equations work and, and all those different things in the uh, kind of the comment area or down below the video today so you can go out there and, and kind of dig more. Or you can always ask questions on Dev Central or, or kind of let us know. Um, all right, so I hope you've enjoyed the quality of service discussion today on, uh, on how to select a virtual server with dynamic um, load balancing. And because this, is, uh, because this one uses all these different performance factors, and we've talked about all these, one, all these different uh, you know, types of load balancing, this is, our, uh, this is our final GTM global load balancing algorithm or global load balancing mode uh, whiteboard Wednesday video. So thanks to everybody out there that have uh, stayed with us in all these. Thanks to you who have watched them all. And uh, we appreciate it. And we will see you out there in the community.